Hi everyone, I'm Chef Tracy DeWitt from Le Cordon Bleu College in Scottsdale, Arizona. Today I'm going to show you a demonstration on how to make flourless chocolate cake. And flourless chocolate cake is a very simple cake, but we're going to elevate it to a different level. We're going to bring it up a notch. Uh, here at Le Cordon Bleu we like to uh, take basics techniques, very, very simple techniques, and then work on elevating them to a new level. So today I'm going to show you how to create this stunning glazed cake, flourless chocolate cake. It's got a beautiful glissage, which is French for a nice chocolate glaze. I'm going to show you how to make a little strawberry flower and teach you how to make some of these beautiful chocolate decorations that are, dar are darning the side here. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the other things we can do in terms of plating up this dessert and also talk to you a little bit about uh, tempering chocolate and some of the showpiece work that we do here at school. So let's get started. Our recipe for flourless chocolate cake. It's a super easy recipe. We see four ingredients here in front of me. We've got eight ounces of dark chocolate, seven ounces of melted butter, nine ounces of granulated sugar, and five whole eggs. Now what we want to do is, is melt the chocolate first. Okay? When we melt chocolate, we want to melt it over a double boiler. So what's a double boiler? Well, we're going to fill up a pot with some warm water. We're going to place this bowl on top of the pot of warm water. Okay? And the water underneath is going to be hot enough to melt our chocolate. This is the safest way to melt chocolate. If we melt it on a direct heat, we can burn it. We don't want it to touch the water while it's melting. And once it's melted, this is so easy, we just do it all in one bowl. Okay, so we're going to add the melted butter. And we're going to add the sugar. And we're going to combine those together. So the chocolate's warm, the butter's warm, and you add the sugar, that helps to cool it down a little bit. And then the last thing we're going to do is stir in our eggs. Now what most people don't know about flourless chocolate cake is that it's actually a custard, like cheesecake like creme brulee, your favorite custard. And what is a custard? Well, a custard is something that is cooked in a water bath in the oven using eggs to set the liquid. So any liquid that is set by the coagulation of egg yolks is considered a custard. So all we do is break up the eggs, blend them in, one or two at a time. And that's it. So easy. Super easy. So this would be a good beginning phase. If you've never baked before, this is something you could do today without any experience at all. Okay, so what we're going to do is transfer this into a cake pan. Now, in the cake pan has a piece of paper on the bottom. We're using baking paper. This is called parchment. And all I did was cut out a little circle, put it into the bottom, put my cake batter in there, smooth it out, okay? And then we're going to bake this on a sheet pan, or if you have a cookie sheet, that will work. Let me get this out of the way. Now, when you put it in the oven, just set it near the oven. We're going to bring some water, okay, to the cookie sheet. You're going to fill the bottom of the pan. Till it's about halfway full. Okay, so that's our water bath. That's going to protect the cake while it's baking in the oven. Carefully slide that in. And we're going to bake this at 300 degrees. All right, 300 degrees, why so low? Well, really the reason that we have to cook it at a low temperature is so that the eggs don't scramble and become scrambled eggs. So the water is helping to protect that cake from scrambling, really. The water will not exceed 212 degrees. It'll probably be around 160. 
And that's the temperature we want the custard to be, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so you're probably wondering how long that's going to take. So you have time to plug in your favorite movie. That takes about two hours in the oven, OK? It takes a long time. We're going to cook it really slow. And we're going to add more water in about an hour, OK? Now, what you're going to look for in an hour is to make sure that there's enough water in the pan. And after two hours, you should be able to shake the pan. And it's going to firm up, OK? The cake is going to become more like jello. So it'll be liquid at first when it's in the oven. And then it'll start to firm up, OK? So what you're going to do is just shake the pan. And when it looks like jello, like it's firming up, it's good to go. Now, if it only takes an hour and a half or an hour and 45 minutes and you feel like it's getting firm, it's probably because your oven was a little hot. Maybe it was a little out of calibration and it was running hotter than you thought. But as soon as it's set, you take it out of the oven. OK, so our next step, we have to take it out of the pan. So what you're going to do is chill your cake overnight. All right, put the cake in the refrigerator 24 hours. The next day, it's going to be ready for you to take it out. All right, so we're going to take this out of the pan. What we need for that is I'm just going to use this piece of cardboard. Now, if you didn't have something like this at home, just use a plate, a simple salad plate or something. Cover it with plastic wrap, OK? Put some plastic over that. And then we're going to turn the cake out onto this. So the plastic wrap is so that it won't stick. All right, so we're going to turn this over. Now, you may not have one of these fancy tools. This is a blowtorch. And I believe everybody should have a blowtorch, because <laughs> they're fun. And what we're going to do is warm up the bottom. Now, if you don't have a blowtorch, you should go buy one, because they're fun. Uh, but really, what do you do if you don't have one? It's very simple. Just come over to your stove, turn on the stove, and warm it right here in front of, on the burner. Okay, so that's another way to heat it up. Okay, so we have to heat this enough to where we're kind of melting the outside layer of chocolate. Okay, now this is going to be a little loud because I'm going to tap this on the table. So we're going to hit this on the edge of the table. I'll go to this wood one. Don't be afraid to bang it pretty loud. Now, I heard it kind of fall out of the pan. So the cake has now fallen out. And I'm just going to remove that piece of paper that I put into the bottom. OK. Now we're ready to flip it over. So I'm just going to take this, flip it onto a cake plate, a cardboard, whatever you have at home. And now we're ready to take this cake. Now you can eat it just like this. It's fantastic. It's delicious. Slice it up, serve it with a scoop of ice cream. It's fantastic. But it looks a little nicer like this. So we're going to dress it up a little bit. All right, so we're going to be glazing this with a chocolate glaze known as glissage. And glissage is a mixture of we've got some chocolate, some cream, a little bit of corn syrup in here. And I've melted all this together over a double boiler. Now you can get that recipe on our website or by coming to one of our schools. OK, so this is our glaze. We're going to, we're going to pour the glaze over this cake. When we're done, we're going to put it on this board. Okay. So what we're going to do, and get some gloves on first, is we're going to flip the cake over and use the bottom as the top side. The bottom of the cake's more flat, okay? So it's going to make the best presentation. So it's nice and smooth on top. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just smooth out the top of the cake with my 
palette knife, known as also as a spatula. And I'm just filling in the little cracks on top so it's nice and smooth. And for glazing, I'm going to put this right up here. And I'm placing it over a small cookie cutter. And you could, you could really use even a small cup or something to elevate the cake up off of the, the sheet pan, the cookie sheet. This is going to allow the glaze to pour over nice and easy. And what I need to do is just trim this little bit of cardboard down here so that I don't get a puddle of glaze down here. So it won't pool and collect at the bottom. Okay, so I just trim off that little overhang. There we go. Okay, so now our glaze. Doesn't it look beautiful? We pour that right on top and then come all the way around the edges. Nothing better than chocolate on chocolate. Okay, now make sure you've hit all the sides. Turn it around, make sure you didn't miss any spots. We like to call that a vacation spot. Because you were on vacation and you weren't paying any attention to the spot that you didn't cover. All right, so once you've covered it all, if you find that you have a spot you didn't get covered, you just take a little bit of the glaze, tap it onto the side. Okay, so just patch any little spots that you might have missed. Okay, now what we have to do is we're just gonna take a little bit of that icing off so it's not so thick. So once again, I take my spatula And I'm just going to push the icing off, like so. A really easy glaze that you could do at home is called a ganache. One part chocolate, one part heavy cream. Easy recipe to remember, easy glaze to make. You boil the heavy cream, you pour it over your chopped up chocolate chips, you let it sit for one minute, stir it together, you have a ganache. It's similar to this glaze, it's not quite as shiny and beautiful, but it, it is delicious and it pours very easily over a cake. So once you've made that ganache, you could use that as a glaze as well. Okay, so now we're, we're done draining, so we're going to clean the bottom by rotating it around. And we're going to place it on this finished board here. Isn't that great? All right, let's decorate it. So for decoration, let's do something really, really easy at first, okay? And just make some simple fruit decorations for it. All right, so you could just go to the store, buy some beautiful berries, And you could dress it up like so, real easy, something like that. All right, so if we want to add some more chocolate decorations, I've prepared a demonstration to show you how to temper chocolate. All right, so let's, let's show you how to make some of the decorations for the side. Now what we're going to do is first start by melting chocolate to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so melting the chocolate, And what we're going to show you now is these beautiful curls and decorations that are on the side of the cake, these little tiles on the side, these beautiful curls coming off the top. And we're going to use this piece of plastic. Now this is called acetate. It's like a mylar plastic, just a thick, heavy gauge plastic. Okay. And I put some really fun colors on here. These are cocoa butter colors. This is 
really it's red beet juice that's added to the fat you find in chocolate known as cocoa butter. Now this is something that we would use here at school and that you would learn how to use you know, under the tutelage of our instructors here. But at home, you could just do plain old chocolate and spread it on baking paper, like parchment paper, and it would work just the same. The nice part about the plastic is it makes the chocolate really shiny. I don't know if you can see that, but the chocolate has a beautiful shine to it. So if we want to put some color on ahead of time, let me get this flowing here. Let's just pour it out this way. Okay, so what we do is a little finger painting. We just spread the color right over the plastic. And we stick that in the refrigerator for about three minutes. Okay, and that'll set up. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. And we're gonna begin tempering this chocolate. Okay, so tempering. Tempering is a very specific process to bring chocolate crystals into alignment. And that sounds kind of confusing, but really what we're trying to do is make sure that the chocolate sets up nice and crisp, has a beautiful shine, and then it's not gonna melt in your hands. Okay, properly tempered chocolate will hold up in your hand, it won't melt immediately, and it's got a nice crisp snap to it. Um, so what we're gonna do is do what's called seeding. And what we're going to do is add a few chocolate chips to the bowl of melted chocolate. And just start with a few. And what this is doing is by adding a few of these chips to the melted chocolate, these chips are helping to cool the chocolate down. Does anybody remember what temperature we had to melt it to? Okay, so we're going to get that to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. No more than 115. We get it too hot, the chocolate starts to burn. And once you reach about 110, take it off the double boiler and add a few chocolate chips. If you don't have chocolate chips, if you have blocks of chocolate, just chop it up real small, little pieces, and then put them into the bowl and begin to stir. Okay, so what you're doing is you're waiting for the chips to melt and you're waiting for the chocolate to cool down. So how cold do we want it to get? Well, we want to go down to about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's going to feel really cool to the touch or you could put a little meat thermometer in there and you want to be around 80 degrees. Okay, and once you've reached 80 degrees, then the chocolate's tempered. Okay, we're going to make a test to make sure that it's tempered. We're going to take a little piece of paper, we're going to dip it into the chocolate, and we're going to set it right here on the table. And we're going to see if that hardens up in about five, six minutes. If that doesn't set up, then the chocolate's not ready, okay? So what does that mean that it's not ready? Well, it basically means that we have to keep cooling it down. So if it was at 80 degrees and it's not setting up on the paper, you can go a little bit lower, like 78 degrees. 77 degrees. Just keep bringing it down in temperature and keep stirring, okay? So stirring causes the chocolate fat to, well, what we call emulsify. So the cocoa solids and the cocoa butters are coming together as one and becoming emulsified in the bowl. Now Jordan, my assistant over here, she has tempered some chocolate for me, one of our students who's been tempering a lot of chocolate this week. So she's finished the bowl of tempering. She's cooled it down for me. So we don't have to wait six minutes for the test. It's ready to go. The magic of television. Gotta love it. All right. So now we're ready to spread this chocolate onto our acetate. Okay, so I'll put down a little bit of parchment. Nice job, Jordan. Okay. I'm going to spread that out. It 
So this may be something a little bit more advanced than what you were thinking about doing at home this weekend for your friends and neighbors. But on a professional level, a pastry chef has to know how to temper chocolate. If you want to be a pastry chef, chocolate is one of the main things that we work with, making candies, making cakes, and even making showpieces. Now showpieces are something that is a little bit more advanced technique. And I have some showpieces here on the table. I brought with me today a gingerbread house from one of my students that made this in class yesterday. And she's in the advanced class. And she did all this work herself, Vanessa Stein's, her, her farm. So uh, everything on here is edible. It's all made out of sugar and chocolate and gingerbread. And then over here to my other side, we have a, a sugar show piece, which is another advanced technique that we learn in the baking program. And why would it be important to know how to pull sugar? I mean, everybody thinks cakes and desserts are part of pastry, but we don't necessarily think of this, this sugary fruit basket as something that, that a pastry chef would do or a baker would do. And that's definitely a more advanced technique. And this is something, a showpiece like this is something that we could use on a, on a Sunday brunch or in the center of the table. And we can learn how to temper chocolate and pull sugar here at the school, all the students are required to learn these techniques. All right, so we have to wait just a minute for that to set, and then what we're going to do is we're going to cut it into little squares and little triangles, and then we're going to roll it up. Okay, we're going to create a roll, and then we're going to set this into the refrigerator. Okay, and when this is hard, we unroll it. And we get these beautiful curls. We can take these curls and we can stick them into our cake. So what do you think? Beautiful, huh? Who's excited to eat flourless chocolate cake? Awesome. Okay. All right, it's starting to set. You can see it setting up. So we're gonna make cuts. Okay, I just made like a little sunburst effect. And we're just gonna give it kind of an open roll. Okay, we're gonna leave it. Probably needs another minute to set. It's a little bit soft still. You could also roll it around like a rolling pin or a glass or something to hold it in its shape. Okay, we're gonna put that down. All right. So, should we take it another step further? Let's do that. Let's put it on a plate. All right. So if we want to plate this up for the restaurant, okay, we want to serve this for dinner tonight, and you want to plate this up for your guests, uh, we're going to do just something very simple. We're going to make a simple sauce. And we've got some fruit and, of course, our chocolate decorations to put on top. Okay. Well, let's start real simple. Let's do a simple strawberry flower. All right, so this is something simple you can do at home. This is fun and easy, a little knife cut demonstration that you can do. What we're gonna do is make a flower. We're gonna put the knife into the strawberry at a slight angle, pull it out, and put it in at another angle. So you're sort of creating a little V point at the top. And we're gonna do that all the way around. Stick the knife in halfway, pull it out, angle it around, 
until you get back to the beginning. Pull it off. Voila. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to put that on the plate. Let's go ahead and just use this slice here. Doesn't that look delicious? All right, so a little bit of cream sauce. Oh, didn't check the lid. All right, well, this is something to remember at home. Always check the lid. Okay, we have a spare plate for emergencies. Okay, we're back in business. I like to mess up every once in a while so the students feel at ease, they feel comfortable. If the chef makes a mistake, then they don't feel so bad making a mistake, right? All right, so we're just gonna put a little bit of sauce down. Okay, this sauce is called creme anglaise. This is a vanilla sauce. Okay, and the recipe, again, is on our website. It's very simple. It's a cup of cream, two ounces of sugar, and four egg yolks. Super easy recipe. Okay. And then I have also some raspberry coulis, which is just a pureed raspberry sauce with a little bit of sugar added. And you could always add a little swirl or something in there. There's a little spider web for Halloween. Okay. And then you can put your strawberry flour here. And this is a little fancier. We got a little chocolate leaf. And some of those curls that we made. Okay. So we can add chocolate garnish and there we have dressed it up a notch what do you think beautiful all right so I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you've learned something I hope you're inspired to go home and bake and pull out those cake pans and chocolate tools and everything you can do for to enjoy this beautiful craft of baking now come to Le Cordon Bleu and learn some more from us we'd love to have you thank you very much